Hello and thanks for joining me. My name is Jackie Jimerson and in this video I am going to use stencils with open designs and papers of various weights to achieve a sort of depth with my gel prints. So if you're ready, let's go ahead and get started. Okay, so you can see I have a stack of papers here in various weights. Uh, I'm using deli paper and then a hammer mill premium color copy paper in various weights, uh, 35 pound, 60 pound, and 100 pound. So to start off with, I'm creating the backgrounds for my prints. I am using light colors so that they won't take away from the final layer that I plan to put on the prints. And you'll notice that with this technique of putting the paint down and then the stencil on top and then removing the paint from in between the open areas, removing the paint from the open areas of the stencils, I added a little bit more paint than I normally would. And that's because um, when you put the stencil down, it will pull some paint up with it. So you want to give it, you want to put enough paint down to, to where you can um, allow for the, the stencil to pull up paint and for there to still be paint on the plate. And when I'm removing the paint from the open areas of the stencils, I am using deli paper and I prefer to use that because as you can see, you can tell when you've come in contact with paint or when you're in contact with the plate because you'll see that you'll see that through the deli paper. Um, you could use the other weighted papers to remove paint from those open areas but you can't really see what you're doing so you're not quite sure if you've gotten all the paint or if um, the lines are crisp so that's why I'm choosing to use the deli paper for this particular part of the printing process And right here, um, you'll see that there wasn't a lot of paint left on the plate, and that's because I didn't put enough paint down to begin with, and the stencil pulled up most of it. But that is a effect that I particularly like, so um, I don't have a problem with that. And later on, you'll see how I will add more texture to it just to fill up the empty spaces. So now I'm going in, um, after the first layer dried, I'm going in with um, a lighter color. I like to have my darker colors in the foreground and go all the way back to the lightest color in the background. So um, even though it's a lighter color, the colors aren't too far off from each other and that way they won't be distracting when I put down the final layer. And so I'm just rubbing the paper to make sure everything's, the, all the paper is in contact with the whole uh, area of the plate. And now I'm going in with the, the uh, third print and adding a little more texture back in using the same color paint.
and so I'll put that off to the side to let that dry. And now we'll pull the background prints. So as you can see, it's a nice subtle print. The lines are sharp and um, there's still a little bit of outlining that gives it a slight amount of depth, but nothing too distracting. And for the final layer, I'm going to use the same color for all three prints, just to keep it simple. And because I'm going to be using a stencil and removing the paint from the open areas of the stencil, I'm adding a little more paint than I normally would. And so for this, um, part of the, prop, the printing process, I'm using the heavier weighted paper. So this is the 100 pound paper. And I'm doing that because the 100 pound paper is not going to give as easily as say the, the uh, deli paper. So it's going to leave behind just a little more paint along the edges of the stencil. And that's where we're getting the shadow that will give us the effect of having depth in our print. So I'm just going to rub that in to make sure we're getting good contact with the paper and the plate. And I'm going to put it off to the side just to give it a minute or two to ensure that um, everything is, all the paints are, are binding together so that I can pull a nice clean print. And I'm doing the same for this second print. using the 100 pound paper just to get a quick just to quickly clean out the open areas of the of the stencil and um, accidentally picked up two pieces of paper so that second uh, cleaning was with a hundred pound and then I come back in with the 60 pound paper and the lines are, are still nice and, and clean but the rigidity of the 100 pound paper and the 60 pound paper allowed me to leave just a little bit of paint behind. So now I'm going to pull this, the last print, the background for the last print. I'm going to let that sit for a while just to make sure I, I pull a clean print. And so this is the, the first print completed. And the second print. And now we'll finish up the third one. So this is the background. Once again, I'm going to use the Payne's Gray for the final layer. And that would have been enough paint if I were to be um, just trying to pull that layer. But I added a little more just so I can make sure a little paint is left behind when I pull the stencil off. So this is the 60 pound paper that I'm coming in with and I'm just lightly rubbing it. And I want to get all the open areas but you also want to make sure you're not playing around too long and the paint ends up drying on the plate. Rubbing in 
good. And there we have it, the third print. So as you can see, we still have nice crisp lines, um, but we left behind a little bit of shadow that kind of gives us some depth to the prints. And I also like it how um, the stencil part is open a little bit even in its pattern and you can kind of see the background beneath it so you get kind of like a, a glass type of feel to it. Well, I hope you enjoyed the video. Please let me know in the comments what you think about this technique. And don't forget to like and subscribe. Bye.